This could very well be the most important postseason in the history of the NBA. Right now, I would assume there is a lot of concern inside the NBA front office. Now, that is pure speculation on my part, but when you look at the ratings for this season and ratings for the last three or four years, Adam Silver has got to be concerned about this. Now, if you were to believe the mainstream media, you would think that the NBA is a supremely popular league. Hell, if you were to believe some in the mainstream media, you would think that the NBA is more popular than the NFL. Now, outside of the NFL, the NBA receives more mainstream media coverage than any other sports league. Turn on ESPN or Fox. Sports One. Listen to Sports Talk Radio. I guarantee you 70, 80, maybe even 90% of the coverage is about the NBA. And most of that coverage is focused on two stars, LeBron James, Steph Curry. Problem is, they're about to retire. Once LeBron James and Steph Curry retire, who will the mainstream media talk about? The reason they talk about LeBron and Steph Curry, they bring in the ratings. If they didn't, the media wouldn't waste their time talking about them. Now, unlike David Stern with the abrupt retirement of Michael Jordan, not once, but twice, unlike David Stern, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver, better known here on the channel as Alice, he was given, what, about half a decade to build new stars in the NBA? He was given half a decade to set the NBA up for the future. Instead of setting themselves up for the future, Alice continues living in the past. And now, with arguably the most important postseason in the history of the league coming up starting in a couple of weeks, the NBA, they are facing the very real possibility that both of their mainstream stars are going to miss the playoffs. Now, I'm sure you're probably wondering, why is this the most important playoffs in NBA history? (laughs) Well, the 2024 playoffs are important because the NBA is currently negotiating their broadcast rights. Networks are trying to determine whether or not the NBA is worth billions of dollars every year. Executives at TNT, they have already said publicly, we do not need the NBA. The worldwide leader in woke ESPN, they desperately need the NBA. If ESPN loses the NBA, I don't know if the network can survive. The big question, though, with ESPN is, can they afford to keep the NBA? ESPN, they are in a lose-lose. Financially, they might not be able to afford to keep them, but at the same time, they might not be able to survive without them. The NBA desperately needs a strong showing in the playoffs because over the last three or four years, ratings for the regular season have absolutely sucked. In the past... The mainstream media, they have been able to excuse away the shit ratings in the NBA. Evil white men have turned people against the NBA. They were offended when LeBron James revealed the truth about their inherent racism. The media blamed cord cutting. They blamed load management. They blamed NBA players not caring about the regular season. Now, to be completely fair, the media wasn't wrong. All of these excuses played a part in NBA ratings declining about 50% in the last 10 to 12 years. With the biggest reason being the summer of 2020 when the NBA accused over half of their fan base of mythical racism. (laughs) You know, when over half of your fan base lacks melanin, probably not a good idea to constantly tell them that they don't like black people. The excuses for the last three or four years, though, those excuses are no longer valid. Load management hasn't been an issue this season. The wokeness has been all but eliminated. The NBA, they have done an excellent job at concealing their affinity for the woke wiener. This season has been the most exciting regular season that the NBA has seen in years. Western Conference, absolutely loaded. Probably going to come down to the last game of the regular season to determine seeding and who makes the playoffs in the Western Conference. So, why are NBA ratings still in the pooper? Before I give you what I believe to be the reasons that the NBA continues to struggle, let me show you just how bad they are struggling. Last week, the NBA was beaten in the ratings by college basketball again. Well, KC, that's no big deal. Women's college basketball is exploding in popularity. Yeah, but 
they weren't beaten by women's college basketball. I mean, they would have been if the women were playing on the same night. Obviously, the NBA would have been beaten by the real March Madness if the NBA decided to compete against them, which they don't. The influence of the NBA has fallen so far, they're not only running away from competing against the NFL, they're also running away from competing against college basketball. But last Tuesday night, the NBA had nowhere to run. TNT was airing their usual doubleheader. Lakers-Bucks was the first game, drawing 1.4 million viewers. Second game of the doubleheader, Kings-Mavs. They barely drew a million viewers. Kings-Mavs ranked fourth place last Tuesday night. Second and third place were occupied by college basketball, more specifically, the NIT. The NBA was beaten by Georgia, Ohio State, and Cincinnati, Indiana State. Combine those four teams, can you name a single player? Because I can name the starting fives in Dallas and Sacramento. I could not name a single player on those four teams competing last Tuesday night in the NIT. Hell, I would imagine that most people have forgotten that the NIT still exists. There is absolutely no reason for the NBA to be outmatched by a meaningless college basketball tournament. Last Thursday, there was only one game in the NBA that was nationally televised. The Bucks played my Pelicans in New Orleans. The game was broadcast on NBA TV. 285,000 viewers. The NBA last Thursday night was beaten by damn near everything else on television. Their only saving grace was Pat McAfee. He came in with a cool 269,000 viewers, but... It's no accomplishment to beat Pat McAfee because everyone beats Pat McAfee in the ratings. Hell, you could put the dancing donkey on TV and the jackass would draw a larger audience than Pat McAfee. Last week, Mark Cuban, he was on the Draymond Green show. Now, I don't know why Mark Cuban or anyone else for that matter would voluntarily sit down and speak with Captain Doofus, but for some reason, Mark Cuban did. Several months ago, Mark Cuban sold his majority stake in the Dallas Mavericks. Now, in a rare moment of intelligence, Draymond Green asked Mark Cuban why. He asked him if the upcoming NBA broadcast rights deal had any influence on him selling the team. Mark Cuban said, you can't look at linear television and not be scared. Basically, he insinuated that he was concerned about NBA ratings and the direction that the league is headed. I'm concerned about the NBA and I have no financial interest in the well-being of the league. Like I said earlier, this has been the best NBA regular season in years. There is no reason the NBA should not be drawing huge numbers on television. The NFL has no problem drawing ratings. College basketball is drawing huge numbers, so... What the hell's going on with the NBA? I think it all starts with Adam Silver. Alice claims to care about NBA fans, but the truth is, Alice only cares about NBA players. For starters, if you're not a fan of the Lakers, Celtics, or Warriors, it is damn near impossible to watch your team on television. Do you live in New Orleans and you're willing to pay for League Pass to watch all the Pelicans games? Tough shit, the NBA blacks them out. But that's okay. That's okay. All you gotta do is pay $25 a month and you can watch the Pelicans games on Valley Sports. That is, if the app is actually working. Several times this year, Valley Sports has crashed during games. But that's cool. That's cool. Because some NBA teams have made deals with local stations to carry games on free TV. All you need now is a metal rod and some aluminum foil and you can watch your local team. But even then, the games can be impossible to find. Last week, the Pelicans were supposedly airing on something called Bounce TV. I went out and bought an antenna, turned to Bounce TV as the game was starting. Guess what was showing? It damn sure wasn't the Pelicans. It was some lame-ass Tyler Perry movie. Who gives a fuck about Tyler Perry? I can tell you who doesn't. This guy. The point is, this league makes it damn near impossible to watch their product. As a result, casual fans don't. Another problem in the NBA should be obvious. It's the officiating. The officiating has improved since the All-Star break, but... 
the officiating in this league, it is downright miserable. It nominates the NBA for the upcoming second annual Huge Embarrassing Failure Awards. NBA officials, they think they're stars. They think they're part of the show. And the reason they think that is because Adam Silver encourages NBA officials to be stars. Name another league where the officials are wearing sponsorship logos. Name another league where officials are being paid to endorse third-party products. Last week, Pelicans are playing the Thunder. Bill Kennedy is the lead official. Now, this smug, arrogant asshole, he reviews two plays in the first half. This right here is kind of how he announced his decision to the crowd. After further review, it was revealed that Zion Williamson was close to hitting his over on his points total. I, Bill Kennedy, bet the under, so I am taking away the points and his basket, and I am basking in the glory of the boos from the home crowd. Boo me, New Orleans! I'm playing the heel tonight! Obviously, that's an exaggerated reenactment, but the tone isn't far from the truth. When Bill Kennedy was announcing the calls, it looked like he was auditioning for a role in the soap opera Days of Consuming the Wiener. Another thing that is absolutely killing the NBA right now, gambling. Last week, another player was busted allegedly placing prop bets on himself. I think it was... Deontay Porter, maybe? I could be wrong. It was a player for the Toronto Raptors. He was allegedly placing prop bets on himself and betting the under, meaning he was trying not to score. He was trying not to rebound. Basically, he was trying to lose the game so he could win money by winning his bet. This happened right after Rudy Gobert accused NBA officials of betting on the outcome of games. All the while, Adam Silver sits back and he does nothing. Is it any wonder why people aren't watching this league? Last week, Roger Goodell emasculated Adam Silver. The NFL announced that they would be playing two games this year on Christmas Day. This year, Christmas falls on a Wednesday. Roger Goodell is basically going out of his way to impose his dominance on Adam Silver in the NBA. That's how far this league has fallen. They're afraid to compete with everyone else while no one is afraid to compete with them. The next two months, the next two months are going to be critical for the future of the NBA. The league is set up for success. Playoffs in the Western Conference, it should be appointment television. Adam Silver better make damn sure the officiating doesn't get in the way. You can't even have a hint of doubt that playoff games are being rigged. Give me your thoughts on this. NBA ratings remain in the pooper. This feels like a critical point for the league. Broadcast rights are being negotiated. The NBA really doesn't have any leverage in these negotiations. If they don't perform in the postseason, could networks like TNT walk away from the NBA? Why do you think the league continues to struggle? They receive more mainstream media coverage than they really should. Give me your reason. Why is the NBA struggling? Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.